very good morning and a blessed Sabbath to everyone. We enjoy the Sabbath with these studies so that we enjoy the holiness of the and sacredness of the day. May I welcome you all in your homes so we can sit back and we discuss about the preparation for the soon coming of Christ. We will later understand when Christ has come that the coming was very soon. So while we have the time, let's ponder into the preparation and what events uh, precede his coming. So I welcome you all so that we can have this study. Now for us to get on to the lesson, let us start from Malachi chapter 3 verse 1 and we can also you know, intermingle with it. chapter 4 verse 5. So let us read uh, from verse 1, Malachi chapter 3. Verse 1. Yeah. Behold, mm -hmm. I will send my messenger, and right. he shall prepare the way before me. Mm -hmm. And the Lord, whom ye seek, shall suddenly come to his temple. Right. Even wait, the messenger. Wait, wait there. He will not come before a messenger announces his coming. That's mm -hmm. what we, because we saw in, in Amos chapter 3, verse 7, say, you won't do anything before someone informs us, isn't it? In, in Amos chapter 3, surely God will do nothing unless he announces. He will be very unfair to just come without any announcement. Our God is fair. So that's why Malachi chapter 3 says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom he seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Do you understand? So here we are we are we are we have an assurance that he will never because some people say he might come in the morning, he might come in the evening, he might come everything, as if he's going to take us by surprise. No, he will never take us by surprise. He will send a messenger just as he did at the first coming when he came. We saw a messenger who was John the Baptist preparing the way of his coming. He was seen. The messenger was seen, was heard. God will never play those games of suddenly coming without someone informing us. He, will, he has promised, like it is within, in, in a road, when you are traveling, when there is a camera next, there is a sign first to show you how much, how many kilometers per hour you should be driving. So you are not caught unaware. If the camera will just be there without you knowing, it will be very unfair. We will all go to say, no, I, I cannot have that ticket because, because there was no warning. Same as God. When he is coming, he will never take us by surprise. He will send warning first, like he did when he came first. There was a messenger. There was John the Baptist preparing for his coming. So here we have been assured in Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, read again from that. Yeah. Behold, mm -hmm. I will send my messenger, mm -hmm. and he shall prepare the way before me. Right. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Because there were people who were seeking the Lord. The Lord whom ye seek. Because everybody is going to churches, isn't it? Seeking for the Lord. So that very Lord you seek shall suddenly come after a messenger has been sent. So he is not going to just take us. Because if some, someone is telling us that uh, we're going to heaven, we're going to hop in the cloud, then ask one question. Has a messenger come first? Mm. Right. If there is no messenger, oh, has a prophet come? If there is no prophet who warned us of his coming, then it means he's not yet coming. When he comes, the first thing is a warning from a prophet. So those who comfort themselves and say, we have no prophet in the last days, be warned, be carefully warned that there is a messenger first. A prophet is a messenger, isn't it? A messenger distinctly like it was when he came first. 
There was John the Baptist. It was a messenger to prepare for his coming. So the second coming has also a messenger to prepare for his coming. So actually, if you say there is no messenger, I don't know which Bible you are reading. Because the Bible I'm reading is saying there is a warning first. There is a messenger first. Even the messenger of the covenant, the, meaning the messenger is not a normal, is what we see messengers of. It's different from other prophets. Mm. Because this one is a messenger of the covenant. Amen. Where is the covenant? Of the law, isn't it? Where, the, where is the covenant? The covenant is found in God's law. So the messenger should present laws to people so that they are ready for the coming of Christ. Amen. Now, read on. Yeah. And the Lord whom ye seek mm -hmm. shall suddenly come to his temple. Right. Even the messenger of the covenant whom right. ye delight in. Mm -hmm. Behold, he shall come, mm -hmm. saith the Lord of hosts. Right. So when we go to Malachi chapter 4, uh, verse 5, we see which messenger start from verse 4 right verse 4 mm -hmm. <clears throat> remember ye the law of Moses my servant which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments right we have been told what the messenger is bringing First of all, the messenger is a message. And the message says, remember what? The law of Moses, my servant, right? which I commanded unto him in Horeb. We are so quick to say the, the, the law that is now binding is the moral law. But let's get it from uh, Nehemiah. In Mount Horeb is Mount Sinai. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 13, will tell us exactly what Moses was given on Mount Sinai, right? Verse 18. Mm -hmm. Thou camest down right. also upon Mount Sinai, mm -hmm. and speakest with them from heaven, right. and gavest them mm -hmm. right judgments. Judgments? True laws. True laws. Good statutes. Statutes. And commandments. Right. So the statutes we know, they are fixed. Yeah? We have started for a long time to prove that the statutes are fixed. Now, he was not only given commandments only. There are statutes, there are judgments, there are true laws. Four. It's not only one, the moral law. We know the commandments, we know the statutes, we know the judgments, we know the testimonies. We know those four laws. Now, there are some laws that we as a people have ignored. We know as a people we are so strong on the commandments but we are not strong on the on the statutes meaning which are these statutes the feasts because the feasts are statutes now let's see if the feasts are statutes go to psalms chapter 81 verse 1 verse 1 mm -hmm. sing aloud mm -hmm. unto god our strength right make a joyful noise unto the god of jacob mm -hmm. Take a psalm, right, and bring hither the timbrel, right, the pleasant harp and the psaltery, right. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon, right, in the time appointed on our solemn feast day, right. For this was a statute for Israel right. and the law of the God of Jacob. It's a law of God. It was a statute for Israel. It's a law of God. It's a feast. Amen. That verse is is is, is brought up three things. One, it's a feast. Two, it's a statute. And three, it's a, a law of God. So now we have seen those emanating from Mount Sinai. And then we go to Malachi chapter 4, verse 4. It says, verse 4. Yeah? Verse 4. Mm -hmm. Remember ye right? the law of Moses, my servant. Why is God specifying only two? Remember the law of Moses. Which one? Which I commanded unto him in right. Horeb for all Israel right. with the statutes and the judgments. Why not the commandments? Why not the testimonies? We believe in the commandments. We believe in the testimonies. But there are two laws that we have ignored as a people. And when we want God 
to come, without those two laws, we all perish. For him to come, he has to make sure Elijah is brought with two more laws to add on to the two that we joyfully keep. We joyfully keep the Ten Commandments and the testimonies. But the statutes and the judgments have been ignored. Why? Because he tried to bring them with the 80 Jones and Wagona. It was the ceremonial law he was bringing, the statutes, the feasts. But we, we rejected the message. So now before he comes, he uses those two laws for our sealing program. Mm. So whoever is going to get them together with the commandments, together with the statutes and judgments is going to be completely sealed. Mm. So that's why the, the messenger of the covenant is bringing these two more laws to be binded together with the Ten Commandments. So now he says in verse 5. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. Behold, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet right? before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now we, we have been carefully warned that when Christ comes, he's bringing first Elijah should come. Someone in the spirit of Elijah should warn us when that person warns us with the statutes and judgments to be together with the moral law. So we have the statutes, the judgments, the moral law, which is the Ten Commandments, the testimonies, they are now four. When we have that warning, we are being warned for the coming of Christ. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? We say, before he comes, we have to be warned to keep these feasts together with the Ten Commandments. Otherwise, without that warning, Christ cannot come. He comes with the warning that we, together with the commandments, that we break about, that we are Ten Commandment people, we should also be saying we are statute keepers or we are feast keepers. Together, those laws, when they are now being kept together, we have a whole seal. So he sends Elijah with the statutes and judgments so that we add as an additional light to the Ten Commandments. You remember the Ten Virgins? Some have the, the, the five which were foolish. They only had the commandments. But the wise added the statutes and judgments to make them fall or to make them completely sealed or to make them ready for the coming of Christ mm -hmm. or to take up the message of Elijah. You get that? So before Christ comes, we are warned to keep the statutes and judgments together with the Ten Commandments. Now here, that's why Malachi chapter 3, when we go back to it, it says, Behold, before I come, I send a messenger. Even the messenger of the covenant. Which covenant? Of the Ten Commandments, of the statutes, of the judgments. This, he sends a messenger with this law so that we are ready for Christ's coming. Yeah. Is it simple? Very simple. So we're saying, preparation for the coming of Christ is these four laws being warned so that we keep them together. Why should, it, should that be a warning? Because there is a strong, you know, the devil in the, in the dark ages used these very laws. He changed the festivals. Yeah, He changed these feasts. These laws that are supposed to be added so that we are ready for Christ's coming. He tempered with, why would he waste time tempering with the, with the statutes? Why would he waste time changing the Sabbath and the festivals? Why? Because he knows these will give you a complete seal. Mm. So the devil tempered in the dark ages by changing the times of the feasts. Yes, here yeah, the Bible says so. Quite a good news Bible. And it will tell you on Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, what exactly was changed during the Dark Ages? What is it? In Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, what is it? Verse 25. Yeah. 
you will speak against the supreme god right and oppress god's people right you will try to change their religious laws and festivals did you hear he will try to change their religious laws, laws and which festivals. is the, which is the, the the sabbath isn't it and the festival no people just say the sabbath was changed in the dark ages but did you did you know that even the festivals were changed in the dark ages mm. so dark ages is 538 ad to 1798 ad well after the cross these laws were still there that's why the devil now after the, in the christian era tried to temper with them so that we go on and on ages and ages only keeping the Ten Commandments without them. So now before Christ comes, he makes sure that's why he said under 2,300 days shall the sanctuary be cleansed. That's why there is a shout everywhere about the deaths of the committing, about the deaths of the, this feast, about where these feasts are, because it's after 2,300 days where these sanctuary laws should be brought back to the people. So that's why Christ now sends Elijah to precede his coming, to make sure the church whom he loves are keeping, is keeping all these laws. And, and that's why he created a seal. Why? Because why would he create seal? Why? Why? Why would people be sealed? Because he knew some are refusing. So he's saying, if any man wants, so he's picking anyone would say, I want. He's not picking us as a, as a denomination, as a corporate people. No, he's picking. That's why he says now to commissions the angels when he comes. He commissions the angels, the six angels on Ezekiel chapter 9. Go and smite those who do not have these laws. And come not near any with the mark. And you know the mark now are these laws. The Sabbath and the festivals. These are the mark that the angels are looking for. Who has got this, the, the Sabbath and the festivals and the leaves? And who doesn't have and smite. Is it not clear that way? Malachi says, I'll send a messenger to prepare the way. That's why it's not a bother. It's not a bother. It's not, it's not bothering people. But it's to make sure the people are completely sealed before this judgment of purification of the church comes. You know, people will be purified by these six angels in Ezekiel 9 when they come and say, this one isn't the mark, purify. That one has a mark. And then those who have a mark, which is the seal, are left. And that's the time they are called a remnant people. You cannot say remnant when they are commingled with and test. Remnant is those who have been, who, who remained after this judgment or this slaughter of Ezekiel 9. That's where we talk of a remnant. That's why Ezekiel, Revelation chapter 12, verse, verse 17, talks about the dragon now was wroth with the remnant, with the seed. Now, we'll read it properly. 12, verse 17. Revelation chapter 12. Yeah. Verse 17. Right. And the dragon was wroth with the woman mm -hmm. and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Now it is... A remnant of a seed. Which one now? Which keep the commandments of God. Right. And have the testimony of have Jesus Christ. Have Elijah. Or have the messenger. They have a messenger who has been preparing them to keep the Ten Commandments and the festivals. So the, the messenger who is sent by God on Malachi chapter 3. He has prepared the way. So they have this messenger who has taught them the laws, the sanctuary laws, the deaths correctly kept according to what God designed. And then God comes to join that ministry. Mm. It's a ministry from Elijah. We saw in the other, in the other teachings that we had the Joshua ministry. In another way, it says Joshua. In another way, it's Elijah. In another way, is David. is still the same person in another version. The same person in a, you know, now in Revelation 17, the same person is called the faith of Jesus, which is the what? The testimony of Jesus. The testimony does not just hang in the books. 
the testimony of Jesus hangs in a prophet. That's why when you elaborate it in CET, it will show you that it's the prophet that they have with the faith of Jesus. The prophet has the testimony. So when you say you have the testimony of Jesus or to the law and to the testimony, you are saying to the law and to the testimony which is in the prophet. Mm -hmm. That's where we get the testimony of Jesus. Sister White, when she was uh, alive, the testimony of Jesus was coming from her. Right? And when in 19, 19 verse 10, God, uh, Revelation 19 verse 10, when John the revelator had the spirit of prophets, which is the spirit of God. The spirit of prophets is the spirit of God, which was also in Sister White. What was John? Was a prophet. R read on. Mm -hmm. 19 verse 10. Mm. And I fell at his feet to worship him. Right. And he said unto me, mm. Say thou do it not. Don't do it. I am thy fellow servant. I'm a fellow servant. And of thy brethren that right? have the testimony of Jesus. That have the testimony worship of Jesus. Worship God. Right. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of... So what was John with? The spirit of the prophets. So the spirit of prophets goes into the prophets. That's why in CET, we, we read it, 240... 242 where he says elaborating on that verse on Revelation chapter 19 verse 10 tells us exactly that spirit is in the prophets what does he say see thou do it not don't do it I yeah. am thy fellow servant of that the brethren who have the testimony of Jesus right worship God worship God under similar circumstances right the same angel said as recorded in another place mm -hmm. see thou do it not mm. for I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren the prophets so you see if he says, thy brethren, the prophets. So the spirit of prophets does not just hang in the book. Now I'm reading the spirit of prophets. You know, it hangs in a person, in a prophet. So now we are seeing on Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. It's a correction to those who thought in the last day before Christ come, the, there is no prophet. Sister White has long died. We only are ha hanging with her books and nothing. It's a correction that there is a messenger. Of the covenant or there is a prophet or there is a, 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 a behold I will send my messenger which is a person mm -hmm. before the coming of the great and dreadful day is somebody who is with imbued with the Spirit of God and is a prophet and that person is sent to make sure the whole church listen to that message and those who take up this message are sealed. The Ten Commandments and the statutes and the festival, which are the statutes. So they have to have all the four laws as given in Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 13 on Mount Horeb. That's why I say, remember the law which I gave on Mount Horeb with the statutes and judgment. So you cannot be waiting for Christ with only the moral law and say, all oh, these are done away. But my Malachi says a messenger is sent, a messenger of the covenant. And Malachi 4 will tell you that he has got the statutes and judgments on top of what we have already, which is the Ten Commandments and the testimonies. And I doubt if we have the testimonies because if there are those from Sister White from 1844, they were actually active in her time. And in our time, we could have just grasped like it was in Jeremiah. Jeremiah, we grasped his, his message. Isaiah, we grasped the message. But we need the message of this time. There should be a prophet. There is a prophet. So here, let's read. Let's read on. We are going to enjoy. What is it that precedes the coming of Christ? Right? Uh, let's go to Christ Collections, which is from Sister White. Christ Collection, which is Casey. Page 124, second paragraph. Second paragraph. Mm -hmm. The message of the angel mm. following the third right. is now to be given to all parts of the world. Hang on there. Do you know that after Sister White, who was preaching the third angel, we still have another message coming after her. Christ Collection says, the message of the angel following the third are you in that message following the third or you are still in the message we started in 1844 and after 1844 there is still another one following according to what sister white herself 
says, there is a message which follows the third angel's message. Right, let's, let's hear again. <laughs> it is be the harvest message. Now, that message following the third is to be a harvest message, or meaning it's the message to seal us, to get us ready for the coming of Christ. We are studying here, brethren, about what we do in preparation to the coming of Christ. Now, the first thing is, we have learned that there is a message we should follow the third. You know, people are even, even naming themselves with the third angel's message, which is good. But there is another one, following the third. Are we on to it? Or we only are satisfied with the five message, five, five uh, virgin message, you know, the five foolish virgins, they heard a message, but they did not have an addition which follows the third. Are we satisfied only to have the oil without this extra message which comes to join the third? Are we, are we going to? Because we will lose out like the five foolish virgins. We did well by being virgins, but we need extra oil or extra message to join the third. Now, uh, read on. Uh -huh. It is to be the harvest message. Right. And the whole earth will be lighted with the glory of God. Now, we had the first three angels' message. They are prayer messages. Those are prayer messages. But we need the harvest one. When one receives a seal and the other doesn't, what is happening there? They're being separated. Thus, harvest is separate the wheat from the tares. Mm -hmm. Or even go to the normal field. If you are harvesting, you are taking your grains from the field so that they stay separate from the tares. So this additional message comes to separate the wheat from the tares. So that's why case collections in page 124, second paragraph say, this message of the angel following the third is now to be given to all parts of the world. Right? It is to be the harvest message. Mm -hmm. And the whole earth, the whole earth will be lightened with the glory of God. Right? The Lord? The Lord mm -hmm. has this one more call of mercy to the world. Right. But the perversity of man diverts the work from its true bearing. Whilst this message is ringing, a warning from Mar the messenger of the covenant. We, we, we knew that there's someone, a messenger, who is sent to prepare the world. While this person, the messenger, is preaching, do not expect the world to be quiet. Mm. There's someone also antagonizing that messenger. You know, where are the rest of the people who are expecting the coming of Christ? Where are they? They're busy. They are busy with what? With something else. Or with something to antagonize the statutes. They would say, tell you that these feasts are nailed to the cross. These were, you know, they are worse off than the beasts which are in the dark ages because the, the beasts just substituted. Where there was Sabbath, it was Sunday. Where there was Passover, there's Easter. Where there's the Lent, the, where there's New Moon, there is the witch sun. Where there was, you know, the substituting never, ticked. you know, it was changing, changing. But where are the people right now? There's someone leading a people to antagonize those messages, to further blot them out where they had been chained by the beast. Now they take them out, completely out. You should understand, brethren, what is happening to the world, what is happening to our religion. You should understand there's someone further doing a work more than the beast in the dark ages to further blot those times out. We saw in Daniel chapter 7 verse 25 that these festivals were changed. And we have seen they have different names. But now in our time, somebody has been employed by the devil to further take them off. Mm. And that's why we have this cry about, yeah, these are done away, yeah, these are what. But we have a commission to bring them back unto 2,300 days. These sanctuary laws should be back. We have a commission from Sister White, who is Revelation 14, verse 9, 
that if any man worship this beast which in the times and laws will drink of the wrath of God, we have that commission to say, do not worship the beast. How is it worshipped? By the times. How do we worship God? By his times. Sabbath worship is for is a time to worship God, isn't it? The feasts are a time to worship God. So the, 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 the beast has created times for the devil also to be worshipped. So now we have a commission to say, do not wait for the wrath of God. This is a mercy. This is a mercy. It's, it's between mercy and wrath of God. The mercy is to go back to the times of God. The wrath of God is to continue nailing where the beast left changing. But now we take them and nail them. That's the wrath of God. So we have to explain it in its particular context. So here, Chris Collection says, while this work is going on of under 2,300 days, these sanctuary laws being brought back, there is someone who is working in perversity, diverting people. Right, read that statement. The Lord has one, the one Lord more call. Yeah. Has this one more call of mercy to the world? Right. But the perversity of man diverts the work from its true bearing. Right. And the light has to struggle amid the darkness of men who feel themselves competent to do a work which God has not appointed them. There to are do. people who would say, "We, we will make sure these laws are not they are done away." We, we, you know, until God Himself says, "Okay, let me lock down." Listen to this lockdown because if, if God if God wants really these laws to be kept and someone is continuing to say we will worship you without them, if you were God, what would you do? Stop! Stop! That's not the way to worship God. Stop! Even after stopping, we go on virtuals, worshiping online with the wrong perversity of these laws being still antagonized. Do you understand? So God is so offended by us not bringing them back when he says under 2,300 days. Daniel, he was so anxious why these laws were being changed. How long shall these laws be changed and be trotting on them? How long? And the, the answer was under 2,300 days shall these laws be brought back. And when they are being brought back, don't think the devil will just stand idle and watch you, watch you bringing them back. He will go and make sure there is a perversity of people to make sure these laws are not brought back. And they are not out there in the, in the beast area. They are within us now to make sure there is this antagonizing spirit. Now here, read on. Huh? Elijah. Mm. Um, Let's read from 4 BC. 4 BC Bible commentary, which is 1184.6. Let's read this quotation about this Elijah who is going to be sent. We say we should know what happened before the coming of Christ. How do we prepare? We say a, a messenger is sent. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to you. He's not coming in the cloud yet. No. Suddenly come to his temple. Now, now you should believe there is, there is a, a, a kingdom where he's coming to join. You understand? Because when he comes in the cloud, he doesn't come to the temple. Mm -mm. Malachi chapter 3, the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. It's not yet coming to, to go. You, know, you understand why people should antagonize the feast? Because once you do not keep the feast, what are you doing? You are just now hoping to go in the cloud. But when you keep the feast, you know there is a place where the feasts are kept. And that, that place is where Christ is going to come and join him. Now, let's read from BC 1. The Elijah A4. message. Right. Mm -hmm. In this age, mm. just prior to the second coming of Christ in the clouds of heaven. Right. God calls for men mm. who will prepare a people to stand in the great day of the Lord. Right? Did you hear? Now, God is not going to come without this preparation. This Sister White is talking, elaborating on the Elijah message, which we said, uh, Behold, you will send my messenger, Elijah, who will prepare the way for his coming. Now he says, 
God will send messengers to prepare people for his coming. Now read on. Uh -huh. Just such a work mm. as that which John did right. is to be carried on in these last days. Right. The Lord is giving messages to his people. Right. Through the instruments he has chosen. He has his own. Never even fool yourself and say, he will come and say, we had yesterday on the new moon, someone saying, do you think God will look for your O level to say, come, how many O levels do you have? Or come, how many A levels do you have? Then I can send you. Do you think you'll do? This is what the institutions are doing. They are in a world, worldly qualification. God will never do that. He never did that to Elijah. He never did that to Abraham. He never sought all those qualifications to all those people who were called in the Bible. He never. He seeks for a particular qualification. Humbleness, humility of heart. A people we, who are usable, who are humble, will take him at his point. Because he is not going to stand, you know, someone was saying in a, in a, in a lesson, was saying <laughs> there are people who have got their A-level a that they, they were studying, thinking they were going to be lawyers, they were going to be in mechanics and all, but they failed to <laughs> enter those qualifications. And now they say, okay, let me just go and be, be a minister somewhere. You know, come, even with that, we will take you, we will take you. But it's not a calling. That's not a calling. It's an employment. That's an employment. God has a proper calling of these servants we eat, which he is going to use. He is not going to seek for worldly qualifications. He will seek for humbleness of heart and send people. You know, you will look for all those qualifications. Sometimes you won't even get them. You won't get them. Sister White, the very prophet, was not even learned. You know, was not even learned. Went even halfway, not even halfway. Any, not even on these grades. Nowadays we call grade seven, grade what? He never went, she never went there. She had something to just learn to write and read. That, uh, that was it. Because the qualifications are not there. In, in, uh, God does not use them. God uses your humbleness of heart. So here it says, he calls he, the messengers of his own choice. Sometimes without even that A level or without even that O level, but usable. You can read and write. And sometimes you don't even know how to read and write. He will make sure you read and write. That's what God does. So, listen to that. The Lord is, is giving, giving messages to his people. Right. Through the instruments he has chosen. Right. And he would have all heed the admonitions and warnings he sends. Mm -hmm. The message preceding the public ministry of Christ was, mm. Repent, publicans and sinners. Repent. Pharisees and Sadducees. Right. What was the message for, for John the Baptist? Repent. For everyone to repent. Who was the everyone? Repent. Publicans, Publicans and, and Publicans, sinners. sinners, repent, Pharisees, Sadducees, ministers, everybody. Now, everybody should repent. There's not someone who will stand there and say, you repent, you repent, repent, and leaving himself. No, everybody should repent. That is the message. Now, what are we saying? When Elijah is sent, the last prophet of the hour, will be above everyone to make sure everyone repents. That's what John the Baptist was. He had no church. He had no church. They were asking John, John the Baptist, who are you? And he says, I'm the voice in the wilderness. You see the church? Where is the church? In the wilderness? He was just a voice in the wilderness there, telling everybody, repent. He was telling everyone to repent. Yeah, I've seen some people when they are disfellowship, they start looking for bo other bodies to, to, to join and oh, let me go, there is another church there. I'll, you know what, the devil will be happy when you are disfellowshipped and go and look for another body to be further darkened. Do you understand? The, when you are disfellowshipped, there is no more church. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. The people will say, oh, are you forming a church? Are you forming? No, no, no. The seventh church was Laodicea, isn't it? And the next one is what? The church triumphant. It's got no, no walls. The church triumphant is a people prepared, the wheat only, prepared to meet Christ. How readest thou? When our mother Rebecca had twins in the belly, 
She was the mother. We have a mother church. Did you see that? But it's got two people. It's got two nations. You understand? And there is no further mother out of... We, otherwise, we'll be preaching apostasy. Because Rebecca was just one. But what we know is, there are two children, two nations. One is a wheat, the other is a tear, isn't it? And God will now select the tear, the wheat, all the wheat to meet Christ when he comes. So, do not fool yourself and get disfellowshipped for the truth and look for another denomination. There is no other denomination. The prophet doesn't say so. The prophet says, after that, you are standing in with Christ to prepare the way for Christ coming, to worship God now freely, even in your homes. Worship God according to what he says. If it's a new moon, it's a new moon. If it's a Sabbath, it's a Sabbath. If it's a Passover, you now have been released to worship God without these ties around. These are ties around. You know what? You are being tied to follow someone's brain. If someone chooses the wrong date of a camp meeting, you all partake of that. If someone chooses the wrong date of the Sabbath, you all, because you are being tied. But when you are freed, you now do exactly what the Bible says. If the Bible says jump, you jump. If the Bible says sleep, you sleep. If the Bible says Passover, you keep it. If the Bible says Sabbath, you keep There is no one say, I said, do what I say. No, no, no. Don't give yourself your five cents and lose them and use someone's five cents. We are all with five cents. And like it was with Adam and Eve, they had no church. They had five cents to follow what God said, not somebody to take a stick and say, you do what, you know, God warned you. He warned us that there will be wolves coming in sheep clothing to make sure you are diverted from it. That said the Lord. So you stand by what God says. Dare to be, a, he has prophesied to that Samaritan woman. He says, there is a time that will come. That you will worship God in spirit and truth. Which time is that? This is the time. This is the time you don't need any wall. You don't need the wall. You just need your syllabus, which is the Bible. And do what the Bible... Why would you want someone to tell you what the Bible is saying? Why? The Bible is clear enough. If you say, thou shall not kill, you don't kill. If you say, thou shall not steal, you don't steal. You don't need someone to say, I say, don't steal. I say, no, no, no. You only need God to say that. Because the days are evil. Let me tell you, you follow someone's debts. They sleep in their home with their wife and say, Where can we, when can we do this meeting? And the wife say, I think I'll be going to this for shopping. And that period is my period for shopping. So I think do it next month. The whole church <laughs> is, is worshiping somebody. We need to worship God. We need to worship God. The God we worship is free. Freedom of worship, freedom of conscience is what is in the Bible. Do it. You understand? Read and finish that one. Yeah. Okay, before we see here. Yeah. The message mm. preceding the public ministry of Christ was mm -hmm. repent publicans and sinners, right. repent Pharisees and Sadducees, mm -hmm. for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mm -hmm. Our message right. is not to be one of peace and safety. No. As a people who believe in Christ soon appearing, mm. we have a definite message to bear. Prepare to make We have God. no message of peace and safety. We have an emergency from God. And in an emergency, you cannot just be, ah, love, 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 love. We, we is good, is love. Of course, we know it's love. But we now have an emergency. Because Christ is about to come and wipe people. Wipe out those who do not worship him properly. So it's not a peace and safety. It's to make sure it's an emergency. It's an emergency to people. You know, it's like when a car is coming and the, the child is in the road. What do you do? Love, love to, to the child. You can't say, love, you know what? It's very good. It will, it will make you, you safe to come out of that road. Do you do that? Say, come out of it. Come out. You have to. It has to show from what you say. That is an emergency. This is the message we have. We have an emergency. We don't have a love, love message. 
Yeah. We don't have a love, love to teach people how to love them, they each other at home and whatever. No, that that's when give them Christ, they will know what to do. But we have an emergency of what people should do to prepare for Christ. Because when he cries, Christ comes, he will never joke with anyone. He will never joke. He says, it's a day, it's a great and dreadful day of the Lord. Do you understand? So now let's hear um, from 2TG 31.3.5. Hear the scripture points. Mm -hmm. Here, mm. the scriptures point out that mm. someone in the spirit and power of Elijah, the prophet, mm. is first to appear. Right. And will not only prepare the way, mm. but will also restore all things. Right. Plainly, mm. the message of Elijah shall restore all things. Sorry. Plainly, the message of Elijah shall restore all things in the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Mm -hmm. The day of restitution. Mm -hmm. The day the Lord comes to his mm. temple, the church. Right. Stop there. Now, you see, when Sister White, when the spirit of prophecy is saying, Elijah will restore all things, what was happening before Elijah came? Mm. Was everything okay mm. before that? So, why would God send somebody if everything is fine? You know, the fact that he is sending somebody, it means things are not okay. So, all things, what is all things? All. What is all things? It means we were wrong in all. You understand? Mm -hmm. So, Elijah reintroduces how people should worship. Elijah has to come one with how you should conduct yourself in front of God. How the ministry should be like. How the, you know, that's why, what are we expecting? We are expecting a new, that time in Joshua, he said, we are expecting a new church emanating within the church. Do you understand? So it means Elijah comes with a ministry. Did you hear that? With a ministry telling the ministry how you should conduct yourself in front of God. That's why you find there are now elders, there are now uh, pastors, there are now... Because Elijah has to do that. He has to. If the ministry, the old ministry that we have, have to stick to say, no, this was nailed to the cross. No. So he has to come up with a proper ministry. Mm. Proper ministry. That's why he says, he will, he, let's hear from it. Go to uh, read. Read, read, read from uh, uh, verse, verse 1 there. Malachi. Mm -hmm. Chapter 3. Verse 1. Mm -hmm. Behold, I will send my messenger, mm. and he shall prepare the way before me. Right. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Mm -hmm. Even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in, behold, right. he shall come, say the Lord. Right. But who may abide the day of his coming? But who may abide? And abide. who shall stand when who he stand? appeared? Meaning, when, when Elijah come, some will take it, some won't. Mm. Who, may, who may abide the coming of Christ? You have to be upright. So it means this ministry has to make sure you are upright in all points so that you can abide. Who will abide when Christ comes? Right? Uh -huh. Mystery. Mm -hmm. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. Because when Christ comes to join this ministry, will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. Who is being purified? Where is the silver? It's mm. the people. The layman will be purified. When he will sit, he will start purifying. You see, we are not going to heaven yet. We have this purification of the people first when Christ comes. Read, read on. Uh -huh. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. Right. And he shall purify the sons of Levi. Right. And purge them as gold and silver, mm -hmm. that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Do you see there is a ministry which is called the sons of Levi. So when Christ comes, he comes to join, to purify this ministry. So if you say, well, minister, yes. What are the 144,000 doing there? They are ministers. They are now ready on Mount Zion when Christ is with them as a lamp. It's a purified ministry. How is it purified? When they receive the letter rain, they are purified. And this is the coming of Elijah, I mean of Christ, to join Elijah ministry. So Elijah, as he, Elijah appears, comes also invested with the power 
to create a new ministry. Mm -hmm. Right? A new ministry which Christ will join. Mm -hmm. But now, we see when they are standing on Mount Zion, it is a day of Pentecost. We are going to study all that. It's a day of Pentecost. That's why Elijah came with the statutes and judgments. Now, the statutes are the feast. So on the day of Pentecost, the feast of Pentecost has been upheld and seen the 144,000 with Christ on the day of Pentecost with ministers. The 144,000. So it starts with a few ministers going on until it is a very large ministry of the 144,000. Do you understand? So Christ comes to join and purify. How does he purify? By giving them later rain. Purify the sons of Levi. So let's not be so shocked to say, hey, we are used to pastor so and so, pastor so and so, pastor so. He, the pastor so and so, will be only spared when they join the Elijah ministry. Uh, I, am I right there? Go to Christ Object Lesson, uh, page 304. They have to join. They, it's never mind whatever, whatever qualification they have through theology or anything, but they still need to join this ministry. They still need to join this ministry. Mm. Three zero four. Right. Have you found it? Christ object. Um. Right. Let's say here on on the is it sixty paragraph. Six paragraph. Have you found it? You, you can't find it. In class object, object lesson. 304. Um, it doesn't have a, 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 six, a six paragraph, does it? Let's, let's see. Um, um, let's forget about it. I'll, I'll bring it when I, I have the proper, the proper, uh, the proper chapters. So let's go back to the messenger. Uh, uh, where you were reading, right? Okay. The message, uh, where, where you were reading at the fair, God will have, right? God will have representatives in every. Or start where you left. The oh. message must go from. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. The message mm -hmm. must go from yeah. east to west. Right. And from west to east again. Now we have the, the Elijah's message, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So how does it start? From east to west. Did you hear? Mm -hmm. for, for we know when the disciples were left in, in, the, in the early Christian church, they were, their headquarters was in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? So how did they get to the west? Through persecution. Through Constantine when he was persecuting in the Dark Ages. They... The woman fled to the west, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But now look at the, the message when it starts. It starts from east to west. Did you hear? Mm -hmm. That's why when we read in Revelation chapter 7, go to Revelation chapter 7. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse 1. Verse 1. Uh -huh. And after these things, mm -hmm. I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, right, holding the four winds of the earth, Right. That the wind should not blow on the earth, mm -hmm. nor on the sea, nor mm -hmm. on any tree. Right. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, mm -hmm. having the seal of the living God. Did you see the seal where it's coming from? From the east. From the east. Now, Chris, uh, Chris uh, Collection says the message on page 124.1, the message must go from the east to the west. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? Now, Revelation chapter 7 says, A message came from the east, east. to say what? Read that, that message. Uh -huh. And I saw another angel ascending <laughs> from the east, right? having the seal of the living God. Right. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to head the earth and the sea, right. saying, Right. Hate not the earth, right? Neither the sea, right? Nor the trees, right? Till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads, right? So this message is coming from the east to the west. Now, is the sealing, or is the when is the addition? 
we saw in the three seals that we had three seals, which is God, in early writing, page 15, God, New Jerusalem, and a glorious star containing Jesus' new name. So this angel bringing the message from the east is the second seal. The first seal is the Sabbath, right? The second seal has to do with the worship in the east. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Now, here we are being told by, by Sister White in Chris Collection, page 124.1, the message must go from the east to the west. Read on there. Uh -huh. And from west to east again. Right. We still expect that this message will come also from west to the east, to the east again. Amen. Did you hear? Amen. Right. Read on. The prophet? A great. Yeah. Oh, sorry. A great shaking. A great shaking must come up. Must right. Come. When this message comes from east to west, it preceded by a great shaking. shaking. Did you mm -hmm. hear? Mm -hmm. Shaking means some yes, some no. Mm -hmm. So he says people are being shaken. Like when you are harvesting, you are shaking. You are taking the grains from the tares. There's a great shaking there of separating the grains from the tares. You understand? So now, when this message comes from the east, meaning it's the second seal, New Jerusalem. Or oh, what is New Jerusalem? The statutes being kept now in Jerusalem. Do you understand? So here it says, it will create a great shaking. We are studying, isn't it? Let's study. Uh -huh. The professed believers mm. in the truth for this time are, are asleep. asleep. Did you hear? Mm. When they all slept and slumbered and slept the ten virgins, that's when the message came. Huh? Behold the bridegroom coming. Now here we are being told that even in any writing it will tell that we have sleeping preachers preaching to a sleeping church and preaching a dead message to a sleeping church. It says so in early writing. Now here, Sister White is saying, the professed believers, at the time the second seal is being proclaimed, from the east to the west, the professed believers are asleep. Mm. Did you hear? Asleep means they are actually not in bed, but what they are preaching are dead messages. Yeah. Just dead, that they do nothing. The message is if they don't even move you to do anything. They just comfort and lull you that you're all right, you're all right, you're all right, just making you sleep. But a, a, a message which should wake you up comes now with the angel coming from the east. Did you hear? Revelation chapter 7, the message from the east came to seal. Hold till we have sealed. Coming to find the church sleeping. Or oh, meaning... Preaching dead messages that do not make you aroused. Did you hear? Mm -hmm. If you are still preaching the message which aroused uh, people in 1844, really, for the 1844, they were aroused. For instance, when you go in the Bible, Isaiah, Jeremiah, they were preaching messages to their people at that time. They cannot really shake you up. Only the message which is pertaining to our time will wake you up. So now, in 1844, the first seal was grasped by those who received it. It was for the Sabbath keeping. But the next one was rejected, where A.T. Jones and Wagon came with the message of the ceremonial law for us to keep the feast. So that message again comes prior to the coming of Christ to arouse people, which are the statutes and judgment or the feasts. The people not to kill the lambs or to sacrifice. No, those we repeat to tell you that the sacrifices were nailed to the cross. But the feasts, as they were being kept by the early Christian church, they were still being kept. It was well after the cross. These are also supposed to be kept together with the Ten Commandments. That's why the Peters, the Pauls, and everything they were keeping the feasts in Jerusalem well after the cross. They were still keeping the, the, the Ten Commandments. They were still keeping everything after the cross. That message is the one to come to arouse the church soon after the Sabbath message was preached by Sister White. Now, the professed believers in the truth for this time are asleep. Read on. Mm -hmm. They need to awake. They need to wake up. 
and shine on you. Right. Because the light of truth has not only flashed upon them, mm. but rightly done its work. Right. Uh-huh. God will have representatives in, in every, every place, place in all parts of the world. That's why I say there is no need of having another denomination. Yeah. Once you are out there, what is next is to have sporadic people in all countries all yelling about the second message, hmm. about the second seal, about the statutes. These are the people sounding which God has made in different nations to sound the warning of the coming of Christ. Now here we are being told God will have representatives in every place, in all parts of the world. Never mind if you are only one where you are, or two, or whatever, but they will be all over. But where do these people meet? They meet when they keep the feast. Amen. They meet like he, today we are meeting on a Sabbath. It's a feast already. We meet on the Passover. We meet on the Pentecost. We meet on the Tabernacles. Right, now let's hear this is why the angel with the seal of Revelation chapter 7 was coming from the east. To make a lot of people in different places to sound the warning of the coming of Christ. How do you sound that warning? By keeping also the feast together with the commandments. Now here, then what do we expect? Then the church must expect events of the half hour silence or oh, Ezekiel 9 I'm reading still from Christ Ezekiel 9 to purify the church mm. now what are we expecting we are expecting Ezekiel 9 to start purifying those who have already taken up the message of Elijah of the messenger do you understand of the warning then they they are empowered with the letter end what is those who refused ezekiel 9 will say pass through to the angels pass through and make a sign smite all those who did not receive the messenger of the covenant and then what about then we expect the second fruits the great multitude after that now we have three things that we're expecting right we are expecting one we are already having the message of the feast mm -hmm. right it is to prepare for the coming of christ that's what we have heard one next what do you we expect we expect the pentecostal power yeah mm -hmm. to the one forty four thousand on mount zion right and next what do you expect when the pentecostal power is is on on day of pentecost what was it passover the half hour silence which is one week mm -hmm. we will study that prophecy for one one week of the passover what do you expect of the passover these six angels coming to smite those who have no mark on their forehead we saw it in ezekiel 9 isn't it so we are expecting then after that we expect an in gathering of saints in the of the second fruits which is now now let's let us study that let's go to the quotation on SC. SC, I heard someone asking, what is SC? SC is second coming. You say, you check it in the in New Ellen White Estate. It's called SC in abbreviation. It's the second coming. So that, let's go to that book. SC 3206, first paragraph. Let's read this one. What are we expecting according to the scriptures? According to the scriptures, mm -hmm. God will deliver his people Right. Out of the time of trouble that is now flying from the coast of the earth. Right. Now, Sister White was was reading this, uh, was writing this in the time of um, a, a, around 1845, 1860 there. Between 1845 and 1860 there. You know exactly what was happening. She was in America, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And what was happening around here, uh, they were, they were, this slavery was still on. Yeah, slavery was still on. People were being, you know, bloodshed and everything. You know, when there was slavery, there was a lot of problems, isn't it? So that's the time of trouble she's talking about. She's saying, according to the scriptures, God will deliver his people. She, she was actually moved to say that. 
in the time of slavery. According to the scriptures, God will deliver his people out of the time of trouble that is now flying from the coasts of the earth and to all appearances forming an injunction in this retributive land of blood. That's what, he was, she, was, that's what she was referring to. Read one from there. Mm -hmm. And slavery. Right. By his voice from heaven. Right. When he sealed them. Right. So and she was actually reassuring people who were in slavery were being kept kept invented as slaves so are we not people or whatever it was that time it says the lord uh, read the whole sentence again let's hear it according to according the scriptures, to the scriptures mm. god would deliver his people mm -hmm. out of the time of trouble that is now flying from the coast of the earth mm -hmm. and to all appearances forming a junction in this retributive land of blood and slavery right by his voice from heaven mm -hmm. when he sealed them Mm. And Christ has made the atonement and fitted the mansions in the New Jerusalem. Right. Then there will be his chosen ones to execute the judgment written. Is it? She was talking about the slaves at that time. Mm -hmm. And seeing how they were wailing in trouble. And saying, there will be a voice from Jerusalem mm -hmm. to call these people. It, it says, by his voice from heaven, right? when he sealed them. And the same slaves will be sealed. Mm. That's what she was saying, reassuring them. You will be sealed by Christ. By his voice from heaven. Mm -hmm. And read on. When he has sealed them, mm -hmm. and Christ has made the atonement and fitted the mansions in the new Jerusalem, then there will be his chosen ones to execute judgment written. So he was saying, she was saying, the slaves will be the chosen people mm. to start the kingdom in Jerusalem. Amen. Did you hear that? Amen. That was encouraging at that time to those who were hearing because they were lamenting saying, oh, so we are, we are useless or we are useless or whatever. So no, no, no. To say when Christ, the voice is in New Jerusalem, these people will be sealed, will be the first to start the kingdom. Did you see that? At that time, the people who she was seeing were a bit disadvantaged. So this is an assurance to those people who are disadvantaged, mm -hmm. that she saw them being the first to start the kingdom in Jerusalem. Did you hear that? The voice from heaven, when he sealed them, and Christ has made the atonement and fitted the mansions in the new Jerusalem, and then there will be his chosen ones to execute the judgment written. Mm -hmm. Who is going to do this job of Elijah? She saw the slaves doing it. Mm. That the Elijah will come from them. Did you hear? Mm. Oh, we are, we are trying to read, isn't it? Just mm. study. She saw the slaves going to be doing that retributive judgment in Jerusalem when Christ shall come. Did you see? She saw them being sealed. When they were wailing in 1865, she saw them. She saw them. They said, You are the one going to start the kingdom. There in Jerusalem, when the voice is uttered from Jerusalem, you are the ones. This is the let's study, let's read on. Mm -hmm. after, after this, after this, in the order of events, right? The Lord Jesus will descend from heaven with a shout. Did you hear with the voice after of the that? Angel. So, do you see? First, it was the voice in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and them staying in the mansions. Mm -hmm. Did you see to do these statutes and judgments? Did you hear that? Yeah. And then, after that came next the lord descended from heaven god with a shout. then will descend from heaven with a shout he's not stepping on the earth mm -mm. he's in the clouds did you see that straight now if we are not reading let's not be so vocal to 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 block these messages from god because when you find them there in the gems hidden which no is reading then you find the steps are there first it is the inhabiting of the mansions in jerusalem and next it is the coming of the of the of christ in the clouds did you hear yeah. and what mm -hmm. after this in the order of, of events mm -hmm. the lord jesus would descend from heaven with a shout right with the voice of the archangel mm -hmm. and with the trump of god etc mm -hmm. when god speaks from, from jerusalem, jerusalem then, right mm -hmm. i believe the wise will understand how long it will be before jesus comes right wow now did you see that when Christ, there is somewhere he is talking first before coming in the clouds. 
He was in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. With what? With what she saw as slaves. Did you hear that? Yes. That's what we have been reading. She was saying, she was, she was being shown all that. Now when, when the voice is uttered from Jerusalem, it's before the coming of Christ in the clouds. That's what she said. And then after that, she, she saying, when God speaks from Jerusalem, then I believe she was being shown, you know, you know, it's like Daniel was shown the judgment scene when Christ, the ancient of days, took up and whatever, and the, the rainbow issued and whatever. But John saw it closer to the e event. Mm -hmm. So something much clearer than Daniel. Now, shall we say, the prophet of the day should see much clearer than Sister White. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Because the prophets, they were all talking about one thing. But one will talk in a clearer sense. The others are talking in fact, you know, when Daniel was saying a rainbow issued, but John will say it's not a rainbow. What was it? It was a fair stream. A fair stream issued. And what was it? John actually saw people. 24 elders. The thousand and thousand ministering. But w what was Daniel seeing? The thousand and thousand didn't mention about it. He mentioned about the rainbow. Just saw a rainbow. You understand? But John saw people. Five angels, four beasts. Actually, the lamp in front of God. Twenty-four elders. And so all the things that Daniel didn't. So we should be able to say to Sister White, what you were seeing in those events, you say, you had a voice of Christ uttering from Jerusalem. Yeah? And when we were in the kingdom, it's the kingdom which we will be possessing in Jerusalem. And then next after the kingdom, what starts, what comes? The coming of Christ in the cloud. This is what, but she's hearing a voice, which is good. Voice coming from Jerusalem of Christ. Then after that voice, she sees these people who were struggling in her time. The slaves being in the mansions in Jerusalem. Did you see that? And then next, what does she see? The coming of Christ in the clouds after that incident. So let's study and see. Then he says, and with the trump of God, when God speaks from Jerusalem, that's what we are interested in. Mm -hmm. I believe, read from that time, when, when God, yeah? When God speaks from Jerusalem, then, R right? I believe. Mm. The wise will understand. The wise will understand. How long now, the it wheat, will be. The wheat will understand. Yes. Not the tears. The tears will oh, denga, denga. You go to heaven. Nothing to do with all these nitty gritty events. Nothing. Just waiting. You say, where is the 666? No, we are way hoping in the cloud. <laughs> How long is the 666? Ah, it's the cloud. It's always the cloud. Thessalonians chapter 4 is cloud. But what about these events? Where are they? The test don't worry about the events. They don't. But the wheat will want to know, pry into what has been written for us to know. Right, read on now. It says, mm -hmm. when God speaks from Jerusalem, that's where we are interested. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, I missed that one. You missed, you missed it. Oh, when God speaks from Jerusalem, yeah? then I believe. Mm. The wise will understand right. how long it will be before Jesus comes. Did you hear? Amen. When God speaks from Jerusalem, mm -hmm. the wise, meaning it will be church triumphant. Mm -hmm. huh? Right? That's the reason for study. We know at that time it will be church, church triumphant. They are in the kingdom by then. When the voice is in Jerusalem. When God is speaking from Jerusalem. Have we ever had an incident where, where God is speaking from Jerusalem yet? Have we had that incident? Right? Have we had that incident when we found God speaking from Jerusalem? But here we are being told there is a time God will speak from Jerusalem. Right? And only the wise, you get the point, only the wise will understand. Uh, never mind about the wicked. We will mind about the wise. The, the wicked will just tell you all was done away, done away, waiting to hop in the clouds. So that's the wicked. But the wise will understand now where Sister White is saying the voice is being uttered from Jerusalem. The wise knows it, it's a kingdom. Mm. That's where Christ is at the time when he's uttering from Jerusalem. 
but it's way before the coming in the clouds. Now, repeat it. Eh? When God speaks from Jerusalem, right? then mm. I believe the wise will understand how long it will be before Jesus comes. Obviously, Jesus hasn't come, but there is a voice, but God is speaking from Jerusalem already. So, when is this time when Christ is in Jerusalem? Way before the coming of Christ in the cloud. So, do you see this second coming, which we are expecting, is the coming in Jerusalem first? Now, read on him. Eh? The wise will, will know how long then will it be when we are in Jerusalem? How long? You know what? There's years and years when you will be in Jerusalem. How long then will it be when we are in Jerusalem? There will be years and years before he's coming in the clouds when people will be long in the mansions in Jerusalem. Do you understand? So Sister White saw that. Because that's why I say, the wise only will know how long then, how, you know, the wise will understand how long it will be before Jesus comes. So when you are telling me that Christ is coming in the clouds, I just say, have you really perused to see He's, he's not even yet coming in the clouds, mm -hmm. but he's coming to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. That's what we are, that's the event we are waiting for. For when he is now in Jerusalem, we will still be knowing how long he is yet to come in the clouds. Right. And uh -huh. when God speaks from Jerusalem, mm -hmm. then I believe the wise will understand how long it will be before Jesus comes. Right. The times and seasons are with the Father. Right. So what, what are the times and seasons? We saw Paul tolling, talking about the times and seasons in Thessalonians chapter, chapter 5. It says, as for the times and seasons, you know, and we identified mm -hmm. that the times and seasons are the feasts. Yes. Do you see why there is this calling for keeping the feast? Because that's the main, no feast, no feast, no Bible, no salvation. That's the main theme. That's why the devil deleted change the times the festivals in the dark ages that's what is holding everything of our salvation so now here it says the times and seasons which are the feasts um read on mm -hmm. the times and seasons are with the father right i believe that the scriptures most clearly teach christ's second coming at the feast of tabernacles did you hear and nowhere else Wait, hang on hang on why if there is a yelling of the tabernacles that's the time christ came isn't it but we know in jerusalem he does not come at the tabernacles only the wise know when he comes in jerusalem he comes at passover but the wise know for the general coming of christ in the clouds it is the feast of tabernacles did you hear why this feast? Let's, let's, let's just hop in to Great Controversy, page 399. Why these feasts are so important? They maintain the coming of Christ. One, the Passover, he comes to Jerusalem. Then the tabernacle, he comes on the clouds to collect the general collection of the saints. So why would there be a cry in the last days for us to keep this, the feast? Why would Elijah bring the statutes and judgments? Because they maintain the comings of Christ. Now read great controversy. Mm -hmm. These types were fulfilled. These types were fulfilled. Not only as to the event. Not only as to the event. But as to the time. But as to the time. So the time, you don't blot the time. Mm -mm. You blot the animal which was being, you know, pointing to the body of Christ. But the time does not point to the body of Christ. Did you see that? The time points to the coming of Christ. Mm. The time of the Passover is the coming of Christ to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. The time of the tabernacle is the coming of Christ in the clouds. Now we are reading it from Christ's collections, uh, from, from second coming, which is SC3, space 206, first paragraph. That's where we are reading. SC, we said it means second coming. It's in the second uh, estate of Sister White, if you want to check it. So here, let's go back to the, you know, read on. Yeah? 
I believe that the scriptures yeah. most clearly teach Christ's second coming at the Feast of Tabernacles. Right? And nowhere else. No, in 399. Oh, sorry. In 399. Yeah. These types were fulfilled. Right? Not only as to the event, right? but as to the time. Right. On the 14th day of the first Jewish month, right? the very day and month on which for 15 long centuries the Passover lamb had been slain, right? Christ having eaten the Passover with his disciples, mm -hmm. instituted that feast which was to commemorate his own death as the lamb of God. That's why they were killing the Passover lamb when? At Passover. Mm -hmm. What was it pointing to? The coming of Christ at Passover. Amen. To die at Passover. Did you hear that? So, that's why it says the time was important. Why? That time when they were killing the lamb at Passover was standing for the body of Christ to be killed at Passover. Did you hear that? And then, the day of Pentecost was pointing to the inauguration of Christ. When he went up, he was inaugurated on the day of Pentecost. So, do you see, now on, on our time, the 144,000 stand on Mount Zion on the day of Pentecost. Did you see? Those times are important. That's why Sister White is saying it was not only the event which was important. The time was important. Go to the chapter, chapter at the at, at next which says um, in, like manner. in like manner. Yeah? In like manner. Yeah. The types the which types. relate to the second advent right. must be fulfilled at the time pointed out in the symbolic service. So the second coming, the second advent is there in the symbolic service. Amen. Amen. Now go back to Christ, to Christ collections. It's I mean to SC second coming. Uh, the time which Sister White has said for the Tabaliku is the time of the coming of Christ in the house. The time where the voice has been uttered when Christ is talking in Jerusalem only the saints will know that time. Did you see that? She said the saints will be able to know from the time Christ speak from Jerusalem yeah, to the time he comes in the clouds they will know how long it will be by the time when they are in the mansions in Jerusalem how long to wait for the time of Christ coming in the clouds? Mm -hmm. Did you see those two? We, we have to read and correctly divide the word of truth. Now, here we are being told, in the Feast of Tabernacle is the second coming which we all talk about in the clouds. Do you understand? And it is on the Tabernacle. Now, that's why there is a yelling of the dead. Wait, which death is that? Which death? Because God does not want to leave anyone. If it is the death, it is in, in October. And then you have already done it in, in August. You will miss that event. Mm -hmm. Because the event should be in the Tabernacle, according to the scripture. But which, if your Tabernacle is in June, yet it's supposed to be in October, you will miss that event of the coming of Christ. Do you see why there is a call for us to keep the death on time? It's a messy call, actually. It's not a, a despising call like you think of criticizing what. It's a mess. It's a warning. It's Elijah's. Behold, you will send a messenger to make that call. That was he said. I've set watchmen in the walls of Zion. They will not keep quiet. They will cry aloud. Spare them not. Make sure that the righteousness is brought to the people. They will cry. It's not a criticizing call that you can go and find verses to argue about and say, because of this verse, we are doing what we are. Well, no, 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 no. It's a messy call to say, do you know Christ is going to come with Tabernacle? That event you are telling us in the clouds in heaven is a feast of Tabernacle. Did you hear that? Now, uh, read on where the. Where, yeah, I believe that. I believe that mm -hmm. the scriptures most clearly teach Jesus. Christ's second coming mm -hmm. at the Feast of Tabernacles right. and nowhere else. Right. And that our history in the fulfillment of prophecy has been imperceptibly tending us there. Mm -hmm. Here is the chain in the types. Right. Three times a year. Did you hear that? That's a verse. Three times a year. Someone was telling me that Deuteronomy 16 verse 16 which say three times a year. Let's read it. Three times a year we should worship God. Uh, right. Read 16, 16 verse 16. Yeah. 
verse 16. Mm-hmm. Three times a year mm. shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God Why? in the place which ye shall choose. Where? Where about? In the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Passover. And in the Feast of Weeks. Pentecost. And in the Feast of Tabernacles. Feast of Camp Meeting. And they shall not appear now, before the Lord empty. Why would he make such a law? Because Deuteronomy comes well after Exodus. We still have all the law in Exodus, isn't it? Which is the Ten Commandments. What about this one? Why would he make such a law that we have three times a year we should appear in front of him? Why did he make that law? Now let's go to Chris Collections. Let's hear. Right? Here is the chain yeah. in the types. Three times a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord. That's Deuteronomy 16 verse 16. These three feasts. These, Sister White is now elaborating on these three feasts. Yeah. Are typical. Right. Of three of the most important events since the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Finish. Did you hear? These three <coughs> feasts are typical. And they come from Levit Leviticus 23. We have the Feast of Passover, we have the Feast of Pentecost, we have the Feast of Tabernacle, which we call Camp Meeting. And there are people who say, is Tabernacle called Camp Meeting? My goodness, we are so far from actually understanding what it is. If you want to read both Shona and English on Leviticus 23, verse 34, it will tell you that it is a Camp Meeting, which is the Feast of Tabernacles. So uh, here, that's why we should be in boots. That's why they were in boots. It was a Camp Meeting. Camping, camping in boots. You understand? So, these three, why were they given in Deuteronomy 16, verse 16? It says they are very important events. Right? There's, these are typical. Now, for instance, let's see some of these types. Read on and finish that paragraph. These three feasts are typical. Right? Of three of the most important events mm. since the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. When was he born? If you study the prophets of, chap of Daniel chapter 9, you'll find he was born at the Feast of Tabernacles. Mm -hmm. If you want more to that, you ask me in the inbox. But you should be a prophecy scholar to know exactly what Daniel chapter 9 is talking about. It's the Feast of Tabernacles, Christ was born. Right? There was no way they would be going there for censorship. It was a crowd which was supposed to go at the Feast of Tabernacle, and then they went away from the rest to go and deliver the baby. So the baby was born at the Feast of Tabernacles. And when did he die? At the Passover. Did you hear that? Why would he wait all this time and not die anyhow? Mm -hmm. We have the whole year. Anybody can die any day. But look, this baby was born at Passover. Right? And this baby was, I mean, a tab tabernacle. And then, the, sorry to correct that one. This baby was born at tabernacles. This baby was crucified at Passover. This baby went to heaven on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit came at the feast. Mm. And now we have the feast of tabernacles, Sister White on Christ. On the, on the second coming, page 206, she says the Feast of Tabernacle is the coming of Christ. Did you see this feast? They were typical of events. Now, if you rule them out, Leviticus 23 hours nailed to the cross. But these events are waiting for us in future, which are going in accordance with the feast. You know? He entered the Holy of Holies in 1844, 22 October, on a feast. Did you see why we have this feast? That's where we have events. That's why Christ, Sister what is saying in, in, in Great Chronicles, page 399, not only as to the event, but to the time. The times were important. So now here we are being told, Three times a year has been selected by God in Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16, because there are important events. You want to find out? First Corinthians chapter 23. Um, actually, go to Great Controversy 399. 
so actually we will read that it is too long it told us the passover lamb was slain on passover isn't it but first corinthians chapter 15 verse 23 will will tell us there is the importance of the three times a year right 15 verse 23 verse 23 yeah but every man in his own order right Christ the first fruits. Right. Afterward, they that are Christ it, it is, is coming. coming. Did you hear that there there is an order? Everyone should follow. Did you hear? Everyone in his own order. What order? In accordance with the feast. That's why I said open 399 is explaining the order. The, the order which was on 399 Great Controversy was for the Passover. <laughs> that the Passover was slain when? Christ was slain on Passover feast. That's the time. It's an order for the for the dying of Christ. Yes. And then when did he wake up? On the time when the festive fruits were waved by the by the priest on Sunday morning. That's when he woke up with those saints who were sleeping. He they woke up with him and went to be ordained in heaven, like it was with the crops which were waved on Sunday on the week of the Passover. That's the order. And then there is an order for the feast of Pentecost. What was the order of that year? Was him being inaugurated. Let's go to Christ's object lesson, page 119. Let's see on the feast of Pentecost. There is an order there. Mm -hmm. Right, after Christ's ascension, that's why. Mm -hmm. You found it. 120, like, just at the end there, you'll find. But after Christ's ascension. Right. So you find that this, we want to fulfill this verse, we say each one in his own order, right? You found it, yeah? 118.3. Uh, 118 but after, after Christ's ascension, right? his enthronement right? in his mediatorial kingdom right? was signalized by the outpouring of his Holy Spirit. Right. On the day of Pentecost, right? the Spirit was given. See, the inauguration of Christ was signalized by the Holy Spirit being received by the disciples in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. So you see, that feast had an event in heaven. Mm -hmm. The event was the inauguration of Christ in the mediatorial kingdom. kingdom. Did you see that? Now, on earth, what are we seeing? We are seeing the disciples assembled on the feast of Pentecost. Where? In, in Jerusalem. Jerusalem. And where were they coming from? In, in Acts chapter 12. Uh, chapter 2, verse, verse, verse 1. Read. It was the day of Pentecost. We now know in heaven there was an, a, an event of inauguration of Christ. Mm -hmm. But on earth, what was it? And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, right? they were all with one accord in one place. Right. And suddenly, eh. there came a sound from heaven right. as of a rushing mighty wind. Right. And That's how they received the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And verse 5, where were they coming from? And they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, right? devout men, right? out of every nation under heaven. So they traveled out of every nation to receive, to keep the Feast of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Did you see they were keeping the Pentecost? And on that day, 120 people received the, the, the Holy Spirit and they preached and baptized 3,000 people on that day. Mm. So when we say each one in his own order, so who was in the order of Christ at Passover? The saints that woke up with him. Do you see even the disciples were not in that order? Mm -mm. In that order meaning, we see them in their order in the Feast of Pentecost, 50 days after the Passover. Their order was the Pentecost. Now there were people whose order was the the first fruits which were waved at front of uh, Passover, which was Christ and those who were coming up resurrected together with Christ. These were in the order of the Passover. Then we have an order of the Pentecost. Then 
On the Feast of Tabernacle, what did we have? We have the death of ooh, Stephen. Close of probation of the Jews was at the Feast of, of Tabernacles. Did you hear that? So these three feasts, Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacle, we have events in them. The event of the Passover was the death of Christ, but it had people who were in that order, those who were resurrected with Christ mm -hmm. and went to heaven, received the empowerment, and came and walked with the disciples for 40 days, preparing the disciples to be ready by the 50th day of the day of Pentecost, which were the order of the disciples. So meaning the disciples at the Passover were not yet ready mm -hmm. to receive the Holy Spirit. Did you hear that? They were not ready to receive the Holy Spirit at the day of, at, at the Passover. So and that's why Christ was alone on the cross. They ran away. Why? It was not their order. Not even one. Not even Peter. They all denounced him. Because it was not their order. But those who were resurrected with Christ on Matthew 27, verse 52. Those who are res resurrected with Christ, these are the first fruits together with Christ. First fruits of what? Of the dead. Did you hear? But it says, each one in his own order, in Corinthians chapter 15, verse 23, each one in his own order. And after that, they that are his at his coming. Read again First Corinthians chapter 15. 15, verse 23. Verse 23. Mm -hmm. But every man right? in his own order. Every man has an order. Christ Meaning, the first fruits. When you are looking at everyone who is expecting to, uh, for, uh, who, is, who is looking forward to, to the coming of Christ, each one is arranged in his own order. Uh, don't see me talking like this. I have, a, I have my own order. You have your order. People have their own order. There is an order of a first fruit of Passover mm -hmm. and then order of the Pentecost. Because on the Pentecost, look at Peter and Paul and, and, and those who were preaching there and the disciples. There were now 120 instead of 12 disciples which were walking with Christ at Passover and which ran away because it was not their order. But at their order on the Feast of Pentecost, they were preaching with zeal. Why? They now were suitable to receive the Holy Spirit, the former reign, and it is now their time. Yeah. These feasts are arranged in people's order. That's why Deuteronomy 16 verse 16 say three times a year in the Feast of Passover, in the Feast of Pentecost, in the Feast of Tabernacle. Because that's why Sister White is now saying these three times have important events for the salvation of, now of the coming of Christ in the clouds only. You won't understand these orders. Because these orders have to do with the first lot at Passover we receive the former reign and the first man. And the Pentecost is the third man. There is another lot to receive the Pentecost or the, the later reign on the day of, of Pentecost which is the third man. But there is a first man. There is an order there. And then Taban, T Pentecost, there is another order. And then Tabernacle, the other order is ready to see now the coming of Christ in the clouds. So these are arranged. That's why Sister White says the Jewish economy has not been comprehended at all. It's called these orders. Now, let's see in Joel chapter 2, the, the letter in when it comes. It's not only once and then everybody. No, it comes also in that order. Joel chapter 2, verse 23. Let's see that. 23. Verse yeah? 23. Yeah. Be glad then, right? ye children of Zion, right? and rejoice in the Lord your God. Right. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, right? and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the right? former rain and the latter rain in the first month. There is a latter rain in the first month. So in the time when Christ came, who was due for the first month later rain? It was Christ who was ordained because that's why he say eh, don't touch me to Mary I haven't gone to my father so he was arising going with those who were resurrected with him to be inaugurated to be given empowerment and say when he came the same day it was on a Sunday 
He came the same day and said, all power was given. Mm -hmm. So they started with those who, who were resurrected with him. They started now telling the people that no, because the Roman guards which, which were guarding the tomb had, be, had lied. Because they were been told to say Christ had been stolen by the disciples. But now they're the ones who say, no, 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 he wasn't stolen, he was resurrected. And we also arose with him. These people were in the order of the first fruit, which were in the first month. Mm -hmm. They received their empowerment in the first month. Now, let's hear in our time, we are being told by Joel chapter 2, verse 23, there are people who receive the letter rain in the first month. That's why Corinthians says, each one is in, in his own order. Unless you keep the feast, you won't understand these orders. There are orders. After his, they that are his at his coming, they still have that order. Now, let's see verse 23. Same Joel 2, verse 23. Be glad then, right? ye children of Zion, mm -hmm. and rejoice in the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. For he hath given you the former rain mm -hmm. moderately. Right. And he will cause to come down for you the rain, mm -hmm. the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Right, 20, 28. And it shall come to pass afterward. After that order, the first month. That I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Right. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Right. Your old men shall dream dreams. Right. Your young men shall see visions. So it's after the third month, after the first month, then we have the third month, which is the day of Pentecost. Who are now receiving the letter rain at the day of Pentecost. We see Christ standing with the 144,000. So in our time, the first of first fruits will be the worship. We talked about it that day. The first will receive the letter in at the first month. And then after they have preached to the 144,000, after that slaughter in Ezekiel 9, the 144,000 are prepared by these first of first fruits or the worship. They prepare the 144,000 that on the day of Pentecost, the 144,000 are standing with Christ on Mount Zion. To receive the letter rain on the third month. Do you see that's the order? And then they also will preach and collect the second fruits who will be ready for the feast of tabernacles when Christ also will come in the clouds in one of the years. But this is still the harvest of the church. It has the first fruits in the first month, first of first fruits. Yeah. And then in the in the third month which is the day of Pentecost, it has the 144,000. And then after that, it has the second fruits, close of probation on the day of atonement, which is the seventh month. Then the probation for the church is closed. But while it's the probation of church is closed, these people who are preaching from the 144,000, which is the day of Pentecost, continue the 144,000 to preach now to the gentle world who also come to follow their order. The ninth month is the day of Pentecost for the world. That's why in, 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 in the Revelation, then we start to see in chapter 9 that they are now, instead of 144,000, there will be 200 million. Mm -hmm. That is day of Pentecost of the Gentile world. Mm -hmm. And then after the day of Pentecost for the Gentile world, they go from year to year being collected to the kingdom until close of probation this is what we find in Zechariah chapter 14 go to 14 the probation will close at the feast of tabernacle uh, 14 verse 16 yeah verse 16 yeah and it shall come to pass mm -hmm. that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against jerusalem mm. shall even go up from year to year to worship the king right the lord of hosts right and to keep the feast of tabernacles right and it shall be mm. that whoso will not come up out of all the families of the earth and right. to Jerusalem to worship the king, right. the Lord of hosts, right. even upon them shall be no rain. So you see, the rain was the later rain was being given away in Jerusalem. So if no one comes on that last tabernacle, that's it, clause of probation for the whole world. That's the general now clause of probation, such that those who are left in the in the in the gentle world. They are now ready for the seven last plagues. Mm. So the seven last plagues will have nothing to do with those in the kingdom. 
those who are in the Gentile world who receive those, you read Revelation chapter 16, all the seven last plagues, they are there. They go to those with the number 666. So you see, the 666 was occurring when? When the 144,000 are collecting the, from the Gentile world, what again is happening? On the Gentile world, the, the, self, the four winds have been let loose. So what is the four winds then? They are now restricting people from freedom of worship. Why? The 144,000 are proclaiming these two laws again extended now to the Gentile world. So, but here we will have councils of churches, council world government now enforcing those laws which were in the dark ages. That's what we saw in Revelation chapter 13, that they will now have the image of the, what? the first beast, which was the dark ages. So they start enforcing all those laws which were changed in the dark ages, enforcing by the barrel. Mm. So that is a time of trouble such as never was. But it is after the church has finished profession. And those who did not receive the, the seal in, the, in, in the, the judgment for the church, which is judgment begins in the house of God. We saw Ezekiel 9 cutting them off when Christ comes. Yeah? So they won't be allowed to see the, the gospel extending to the Gentile world because they finished their part. Otherwise, they'll start influencing the Gentile world. But the Gentile world will have also those who are fighting 666. They, those who have 666 fighting those who are receiving now the, uh, the, 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 the message from the 144,000. So the 144,000 now will be preaching to the Gentile world, while at the same time now the four winds have been let loose, and all this, what was happening in dark ages, starts on again. That's why when they are seen in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9, it says, who are these? They are a greater multitude, such as no one can, can number. They are now coming from the Gentile uh, forces, from tongues, nations, all coming to Christ. Where is Christ? Go to Matthew chapter 25. Where is Christ at that time? 25 verse 31. Verse 31. Yeah. When the Son of Man mm. shall come in his glory, mm -hmm. and all the holy angels with him, mm. then shall we sit upon the throne of his glory, mm. and before him shall be gathered all nations, right. and shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the gods. Right. And he so, shall set the sheep. Christ now is, is the time that the voice is in Jerusalem. Mm. We saw that he is now in Jerusalem. It's way before the coming in clouds. So Christ is there seeing all these from the Gentile world, which has been collected by the one foot thousand, and the way is he sending those in the right, in the right. Let's hear. Then shall the king say unto them that are in his right hand, mm. Come, ye blessed of my father, mm. inherit the kingdom prepared for you. From Do you the see that is the, the time for the kingdom? Mm -hmm. He's saying to those who have been in front of him, Come and inherit the kingdom. It's time way before the coming in clouds. It will be years and years when the gentle forces are being collected to come in front of Christ while he is in the throne. And he is taking those in the right, inherit the kingdom. Come, inherit. And those in the left say, depart, depart. This is the time of the kingdom. This is the time when the voice of Christ is with him in Jerusalem. It's way before the coming of Christ in the clouds. So we have to study this. Let's go to second coming and finish that paragraph. And we, we understand it. Yeah? These three feasts are typical right. of three of the most important events right. since the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why even all the events in the Old Testament were on those feasts. The birth was there. The Feast of Tabernacle, the, the, the Pentecost was the inauguration, the, was the inauguration event in heaven, was the, the receiving of the former rain. That's why they, they still, the, the, the going into the Holy of Holies, it was on the Day of Atonement. You know, God still uses those feasts as important events. And what? Mm -hmm. And every Advent believer mm -hmm. should have a clear understanding of them. Now, Sister White is saying, Every Advent, everyone who is waiting for the coming of Christ, for the Advent of Christ, 
should have a clear understanding of these three feasts. And what? First, what? Oh, first the Passover. One. Second, the Feast of Weeks. Two. Third, the Feast of Tabernacles. Every Advent believer should study this. Now, how do you study it when you are not even keeping it? You start by keeping it. That's how you study it. When you keep it on time and you know their relevance, if we are crying the correct date of the tabernacle, the correct date of the Passover, the correct date, the correct date is for important events that are in front of us. If we are to inherit the kingdom and later inherit heaven, we should follow what has been laid to us so that we find ourselves completely sealed. Otherwise, we won't be knowing what is happening. When Christ is about, so the, simply Christ, what, when you don't have a seal, we just commission the, the, the six angels in a second night when he comes. Just to, because you, you just commit confusion. There will be confusion. You should be knowing what will be happening. That's why Sister Arthur, they will know, those who are righteous, they will know how long it will be to stay in Jerusalem while waiting for the Son of Christ. For, for, for the son, for, for the for the son of God to come in the clouds, they will know when they are there because it will be in there. In now, let's visit verse to end. But who may abide? Who may abide? The day of his coming. Did you see why? Because some will be under Ezekiel nine slaughter. Why? Because they don't have that knowledge. They were not sealing is getting the knowledge. Is the knowledge that's why we come to sacrifice all our time to study together, no matter how, so that they will learn a lot of things in a short space of time because there is an emergency. There is an emergency, and let's hear here. Um, 2TG 31.4. But who may abide the day of his coming? Mm -hmm. And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like full of where it says, at this coming. At this coming, mm -hmm. he is not to take his saints to the mansions above. No. But he is to purify the sons of Levi, the ministry. That's what we heard from Malachi. He is to purify. He is not taking anyone at this coming. So this coming, we should study it. If been from Sister White, we have found that there is a time he is in Jerusalem way before the coming in the clouds. So he, this coming is just coming to t purify. And we saw how he purified. He makes the six men, the six angels go and slaughter those without a seal. And those with a seal, he starts purifying them and give them the letter in, on the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. We saw it. Uh -huh. He is to destroy the leaders of idolatry. Mm -hmm. Since the purity of his servants is first to be restored, mm -hmm. the restoration therefore commences in the church. Mm -hmm. Thus, it is the Edenic state of peace and security to be restored, for we are told. Right. So here, uh, let's go to, we want to see what Sister White say in Second Coming, uh, 3207.3, where it starts and say third, third feast. Let's dwell on the coming in, in clouds, the one that we are hoping, the third feast, yeah. On the 15th of the seventh month, the Feast of Tabernacles. Right. This so it is the 15th day of the seventh month. This year, the 15th day of the seventh month. When, when is it? Third of October. That's the, day, this, that's the day of the 15th day of the seventh month. Right. So here he's saying, on the 15th day of the seventh month. Right. Listen. Mm -hmm. The Feast of Tabernacles. Right. This undoubtedly represents the gathering of all Israel at the coming of Christ. Right. Mm. You see, Sister White is telling us that the, the Israel of this time will be gathered on the 15th day of the seventh month. Now, that, you see why the death should be, people should be yelling, this is not the death, this is not the death. It's called sending for that because Sister White is also approving on the 15th Day of the seventh month, the Feast of Tabernacles. This undoubtedly represents the gathering of all Israel at the coming of Christ. Did you get that? Did you get that? So that's why you need to change the date to suit this 
Otherwise, this Bible is saying something else while you are saying something else and progressing and saying, we'll never sink, we'll never sink with the wrong debt. Now, you have to know that on the 15th day of the seventh month, people will be gathered for the coming of Christ in the clouds. Now, when you are talking about the coming of Christ in Jerusalem, it's not this event. It's where it says he will be in Jerusalem to gather people into the kingdom. That has nothing to do with the tabernacle. Sister, what talks about the tabernacle, that is when we are now gathered. Why are we gathered on that day from different countries? Because the kingdom made us gather when the 144,000 were being sent to usher all the, the saints in the kingdom. So when the kingdom, the seven last plagues, have already gone into the gentle world, where are the saints? Where are they together? Where are they gathered? They are already now assembled in Jerusalem, in the kingdom. And now they are waiting for the coming of Christ in the clouds. Did you hear that? Yeah. There is no way he will come in the cloud when people are just running from every coast. Every... God is orderly. And the order he did it by these three feasts. Now on the Feast of Tabernacle, he made the close of profession. That's why I say no rain to those who did not come on that Feast of Tabernacle. And then now, Sister White is commenting and said, on the 15th day of the seventh month, the Feast of Tabernacles, this undoubtedly represents the gathering of all Israel at the coming of Christ. Mm -hmm. They are gathered in one place. Mm -hmm. So that's why there is a kingdom fest. Like when you go in the field, when you are plowing, the very first thing you do is, when you are harvesting, you take the crops from the field. But they are not ready yet to go in the barn. They are not, they are not ready to be put in the sacks. You know, the maize, you put, you create sack, a sack and put them. But they need threshing first. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. They need to be threshed first so that you, 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 you separate them more. Did you see people coming in front of Christ? They were commingled, the wheat and tares, or the goats and the sheep. Now they have come into the into the the threshing field where Christ is saying those in the left depart and those in the right go in the kingdom. Now they are now in the kingdom. They are ready to go in the barn. Mm. Where is the barn? In heaven. So those stages we are doing every year when we are harvesting, they are the same stages that God is doing with his saints. Amen. Each one in his own order. So these three feasts have an order of us being collected. And who is collected at Passover? The wave sheep or the first of first fruits or those who are in the Elijah message with the message with the messenger. Do you understand? They are teaching the 144,000 who will also be collected at Pentecost. They are there at Pentecost with Christ on, one, uh, on Mount Zion. And when they are there, they are sent back now to collect the second fruits of the church and close of probation for the church finish mm. but they start on to the gentle world we see the army now is going up to 200 million in revelation 9 of the gentle world then they start continue collecting in years and years collecting people to jerusalem in the kingdom and then after that, the close of probation, the Feast of Tabernacle, we saw in Revelation, in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16, that will be the close of probation for the, for the world. And everybody now is in Jerusalem. Those who are going to be saved, they are in Jerusalem. You understand? They are now waiting for the coming of Christ. For Christ had gone back before the seven last plagues. And on the last plague, which is the seventh one, he announces it's finished when he's descending in the clouds. Now people are all united. This is what Sister White is saying. They are all gathered on the 15th day of the seventh month and the Feast of Tabernacle. They are ready to now hop in the cloud. Read on. Uh -huh. right. mm -hmm. This undoubtedly represents the gathering of all Israel at the coming of Christ. Mm. The ingathering of the harvest, the end of the 6,000 years, which mm -hmm. is the end of the world. Right. I see no other point of time for Christ right. to Let, come. Let's go to, to hear it um, when he's talking about it cannot be possible. 
Same paragraph. Yes, yeah, same paragraph in the middle after numbers 28 and 29. Then you go, it cannot be possible. It cannot be possible that mm. God has been so exact in the fulfillment of the first two to we, this very we, hour of we the saw, day. We saw how he was exact with the death of Christ, mm -hmm. with the worship. We went to be ordained the first of first fruits of the dead. He was so exact at the inauguration of Christ in the day of Pentecost. He was so exact with the day of atonement where he entered the Holy of Holies. He now, with the judgment of the living, will follow the same order. Feast of Tabernacle, I mean, Feast of Passover, Pentecost, day of atonement will be close of probation. And Feast of Tabernacle, we are ready to be collected in the crowds. Mm -hmm. He is so exact, and that's why we have Leviticus 23 for us to read. Now, go away, say Leviticus 23. Now, now be this Leviticus 23, verse 39 is the now, feast of Tabernacle. Uh -huh. This being true, uh -huh. all of the other events which precede this in this chapter uh -huh. must, to harmonize with the types, be fulfilled first. Right? Now, there are three types in this feast. Mm -hmm. Their harmony and order are as follows. Right? First, 24th So we saw, we saw in the in the type, the 24th, because we have three three things now. The type were the grains in Leviticus 23, mm -hmm. right? And then when Christ came, he fulfilled also those types. Mm -hmm. And in our time for the judgment of living, we still go back to the, to the type yes. where Christ came to fulfill that type, right? So we saw in the type, right, read on. Now, mm -hmm. there are three types in this feast. Mm -hmm. Their harmony and order are as follows. Mm -hmm. First, mm -hmm. the 24th verse right. is the memory of trumpets. Right. This is the type of the sounding of the seventh trumpet. Mm -hmm. There is nothing else for an antitype. So we saw the trumpets coming in our time. The, the, the sounding of the seventh trumpet in Revelation 10. Let's go to Revelation 10 verse 7. Because in Leviticus 23, there is a feast of trumpets. So let's go to Revelation Revelation 10, verse 7. What does it say? But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, right. when he shall begin to sound, right. the mystery of God should be finished. Are we, is it finished yet? Which is the gospel order. Is it finished yet? No. Mm. It will finish in the... Before the seventh trumpet begins to, to sound. sound. Mm. If it hasn't finished, if you are still preaching, then it means it hasn't finished. Mm. When we finish preaching, next will be the seventh trumpet. And the seventh trumpet is just the ushering in of the kingdom. Do you yeah. understand? And so we, we get all these analysis, the orders come from uh, uh, Revelation, from Leviticus chapter 23. Right. Now let's, let's go to conclude our subject. It's a long subject, but it means your brains, when they are very fortified and fresh, uh, go to SC3 to um, 210. It will be, it will here be remembered. It will here be remembered that mm. this message or proclamation of the hour of his judgment mm. has gone to every nation and tongue and mm -hmm. people. Mm. Therefore, as Jesus has stated that this, his elect are to be gathered from the four winds mm. or from one end of heaven to another, mm -hmm. then his 144,000 will be composed of all nations, mm -hmm. particularly the poor ignorant, right? but honest, hearted slaves of this doomed country. Do you see what will compose the 144,000? Mm. She saw in her time that it was mostly composed of the poor slaves. Mm. She, she has said it. It was in the time of 1845, 1860. She was, she was seeing all slavery was full. Because it will be composed by the youth. Do not worry about your poverty. Do not worry how poor you are. This will be composed of the 144,000. She saw that. And what? But. But. Mm. More especially, those described in the 12th verse, mm -hmm. walking out in their faith of all the living present truth. Right. Right. Now, um, I don't want to start another topic because... If I start it, it will need another two hours and, and, and so many. But what I'm saying is that are we preparing for the gathering in into the kingdom first and also for the coming of Christ in the clouds? First, God said, I'll send Elijah, right? Who will, how does Elijah prepare? Do you see the, the message of Elijah? 
the statutes and judgment. The feasts are to prepare the people for the gathering in into the kingdom. That's why he says in Isaiah chapter 66, from one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, because this was prepared by Elijah when he came with the statutes and judgment, with what will make us uh, go into the kingdom. It is this very preparation when Christ will send Elijah. And why Elijah will be sent with the feasts is because this message has not been comprehended at all. It has been neglected. It had been left. We are supposed to bring every truth of the sanctuary back unto 2300. The sanctuary laws should be back to the people to make the people prepare for the soon coming of, the, of, of God. So we are supposed to be prepared by the keeping of the commandments, the statutes, the judgments, all the feasts, and have a prophet who is sent before the coming of God, which is a messenger of the, of the, of the covenant. May God bless us. We have a long way to go to learn and be prepared for the soon coming of God in the clouds. May God bless you all in this Sabbath. In the name of God, I pray.